Hey everyone, welcome back to a special episode of Nerd Talk here on the Nerd Network. Got a couple of guest stars with me. We're going to talk about Disney Plus's Marvel Shorts for I Am Groot that just came out on the 10th of August. Uh, super excited to have this conversation. We're not going to worry about the non-spoiler thoughts today. We're going to dive right in because it's literally 15 minutes of content. Um, it wasn't a whole lot, but it was worth it and there was a lot of good stuff in them. So we're going to pick kind of our highlights of what we liked best out of them. And apparently get Nathan some Usenix, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna move on from there. So we're gonna start with Nathan first. Nathan, I am Groot. Disney Plus, Netflix, Vin Diesel came back to voice Groot. We got Bradley, uh, Bradley. Um, we got Rocket Raccoon as a cameo. Bradley, whatever his name is. Um, what was your favorite part about these five shorts, or favorite so, two parts? Favorite two parts. So probably definitely. The oh, what's it? I want to say the second or third episode where he's on that planet, he builds like a stick tree mm-hmm. house. The board comes in, wrecks it, he gets all mad, and then he finds the little civilization and then at the end steps on it. And then, like, it's like, oh, whoops, covers it back up. He covers it with a rock. <laughs> that love that that whole episode was great and then the last episode magnum opus where he uh he's making something and so he's going through the ship getting stuff and that's where we see uh an appear a cameo of drax in the shower which eh. um and then rocket raccoon which i love uh rat rocket anyway so between having Rocket and Groot, and I love Rocket walks into the room. Groot, what have you been doing? What the hell? The bomb went off? I am Groot. You set a bomb off? What are you doing? And I love, the wall is on fire, but it's wet. How did you do that? And he's like, oh, I can't stay mad at you. And he, the little picture, um, which references him protecting him which is cool yeah i think that's a longer conversation we need to have we'll do that here at the end but that picture is that's huge of all the things that come out of this in a show that should not really have done much to expand the lore of the mcu that single image really does so we're gonna talk about that here at the end um as far as my favorite parts i loved basically skinning the cat in that same episode um, I liked the mud bath episode. That was really cute. I think my favorite part, though, was when the like rainbow goop gets out, which, by the way, that is very close to a symbiote. And then it like becomes him and is like dancing with him and playing with him. And then he airlocks it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Little murder kid. And then he says, I am Groot, like with the inflection on the eye. And I was like, yes, you are. <laughs> um yeah sean what are your thoughts on this uh five shorts so i loved them i am a huge fan of groot um i've stated before that my two favorite top heroes in the mcu is groot and deadpool um so the fact that we got a little short series is cute however i have some negativity that i'll get to in a minute um my favorite part of these five is is actually probably the same episode that nathan was talking about with the bird treehouse and everything i thought it was really cool that we were getting almost a simulation of child playing with ants until the ants took out laser weapons and started shooting at group (laughs) (laughs) and then they immediately are joyful when Groot basically poops out a leaf. And they're like, oh, yay, he gave us food. Absolutely right. hilarious that he kills the entire colony, but, you know, hey. Um, so that'd be my favorite part. The negative part that I have with this is they could have done a lot more with this. They could have turned it into five, you know, 20-minute episodes and had it be the adventures of Groot. And, and you could have cameos of the other guardians that are helping him learn life experiences. 
not necessarily yeah. anything that changes the lore of the MCU, but just kind of gives, raising a kid. Yeah, gives meaning to the whole raising root thing. Um, um, I will say I, I don't need them twenty minutes or twenty five minutes. I think seven to ten minutes would have been good. I think too much of that. To, as much as I love Groot, I think too much of Groot is a bad thing. So I think it's very much like Darth Vader. Right now, um, you know, he showed up in Rogue One. He showed up in Kenobi. Has he shown up anywhere else in this new era of Star Wars yet? I don't think so. He might show um, up in Andor. Uh, he probably will show up in Andor because he's Darth Vader. But they've used him sparing. And even though he was a central character to the Obi-Wan series, because of the way they did read the story, they sidelined him and used him as flavoring. Groot is flavoring for a couple of reasons. You can't get a lot of character out of a character who only says three words. It's unfortunate because it's part of his charm. So I think a 25 minute episode, um, we would get to the midpoint and be like, oh dear God, yes. Um, unless they're really good. Marvel has a knack for just really knocking out of the park. Well, I think this was too short because they were six minute episodes with three minutes of credits. Right. What what I was going with that was, you know, they could still have five episodes like they have. They have four other guardians in the right. Rocket, at, Drax, Gamora, at this point in the timeline. Star Lord. At this point in the timeline, it's prior to Age of Ultron, based on the new Disney timeline. Um, so it's prior to Guardians 2. Right. So there's still four of them. So there is Star Lord, Five, Gamora, four. Drax, Rocket, and that's it. Right. So they could have four episodes with one character oh. from each episode. No. It's got to be after Guardians 2 because they're on that bigger ship. Okay. So then you've got Cracklin and Mantis and Nebula. Right, so you have enough characters that you can pull from the characters and use them as as like guiding principles for each episode and have one of the Guardians in each episode. And I think that would have been a really cool cameo to be able to bring in characters. It would have been really cool to give Fruit a little bit more story. And my I... only negative comment is that we got 15 minutes of com uh, content. Yes. Yes, and I 100% agree with that. I watched this and I was like, oh, this is cool, this is cool. And then we got to credits and I'm like, well, that was short. And I checked, we had three minutes left and I'm like, this is WandaVision all over again. Um, what I will say is I, I do disagree with you because if you notice, everything of this series was animated. Every single thing. And the reason we got Rocket is Bradley Cooper. All he had to do was go into a, a voice booth and record the lines. In order to do any of the other Guardians, you have to get um, you have to get Chris Pratt. You have to get Dave Bautista. You've got to get uh, Zoe Saldana or Tom Clementine or Sean Gunn or um, what's her face? Um, shoot. The chick who plays Nebula. Um, and then you're combining because it was more of an animation style than a normal MCU movie. So I did notice that, and I liked that because there's things you can do with the animation you can't do with regular, even some of the stuff we saw Groot do, you can't do in the regular MCU because it's a little weird. I gotcha. Um, would I like to see more of the Guardians? Yes. <laughs> Hands down. Um, I just don't think this is the place for one thing I will mention, the little intro when we get the Marvel, you know, intro song and Groot takes the remote and fast forwards it. It's hysterical. And then it walks into the camera. It's, yeah, it's yeah. hysterical, but it's also, it's kind of necessary because it's only a six minute. Yeah. Clip. And they can't like, it's a, you know, a three minute episode. That intro is a solid minute if they play the whole thing. Um, I am excited for the next five episodes. I think where we will see the Guardians, though, is the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special in a couple of months. 
Yes. Uh, I don't know if you knew we were getting that. I did. We're getting that, and we're getting something called a Halloween special, which I think is going to be Werewolf by Night. Um, but I don't think any guards going to show up there. I I think we'll get the other five episodes for the end of the year. Yeah. So I, I'm excited by it. I enjoyed it. I would give this a solid four. I would agree with you. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, just like you all said, lack of content. So a, a full yes. for me. I, I, I will say the thing that this would be a five because I always say a four is a perfect show. A five is perfect plus basically fan service in a tasteful way. This had all that. Um, but the shortness of the episodes knocks it back to a four. Sean? Uh, about a four and a half, just because of lack of content. I got you. So, real quick before we close, let's have a conversation about that picture. And we're going to put a shot of that picture up right here. This blew my mind. Sean and I watched this whole thing together back to back to back. And we literally backwards, once that picture flew up there, we went, whoa. And we floated back and paused it. This is literally a moment where our older Groot sacrifices some spoiler alert for a six-year-old movie sacrifice or no it's even older seven-year-old movie sacrifices himself at the end of guardians one and saves everyone and it's got a little leaf at the top with the face on it that our assumption is that represents baby Groot. it blows my mind that he has this memory to create this I thought that was a really neat because I didn't expect this to change the way we look at the MCU or look at any of these characters because this is just a fun sideshow. That single picture changes the way we look at Baby Groot. Yeah. Well, because correct me, I'm not, I like Groot, but I'm not as familiar as you and Sean are. So before this, it, we really didn't know whether or not he remembered, right? Right. It's kind of questionable. Well, it's hard to tell if someone remembers when we need a secondary person to translate for us. Correct. Rocket is the only person who understands what Groot says. And unless there's... Not true. By the time you get into Guardians 2, I, I want to say a couple of the others. I don't think Drax can, but I believe Star-Lord is able to at that point. And I know um, Mantis can by Infinity War because of the, the um, yeah. psychic crap. So so we have very limited number of people yes. that understand group. It's almost like there's only so many people in, in documented Star Wars like movie lore that can understand Wookiees. Exactly. So He's the Wookiee of the Guardians. Right. So when we have this character that there's a language barrier between the audience and the character that there's only a limited number of people that can understand him, and those limited number of people aren't asking the question that we want answered. Right. We can't under we we won't understand that. This picture explains the fact that not only does Groot remember, but I'm almost I almost want to say that he has a sentient recognition of at least his previous life. If not yes previous lives plural because we don't know how many times Groot has died you're right and i think this is going to play into guardians 3 with the confirmation we're getting the high evolutionary that is all a high evolutionist thing is creating better and better life forms so with the fact that Groot basically resurrects that's a game changer yeah uh, especially going into guardians 3 with that in mind um yeah i, I mean, think it's gonna be awesome it could even probably be said that Groot's going to be maybe more of a focus because the high evolutionary might be trying to take him to... No, the, the focus is definitely seated in Rocket. Okay. high evolutionary made Rocket. I gotcha. Um, we, the, some of the footage out of um, City of Comic-Con, the trailer they showed of Guardians 3 that they haven't released the public yet has two very distinct shots. One of a baby Rocket, like a kit with a giant hand reaching into the cage to grab him, he look at scared. And then another of a slightly older, like an adolescent raccoon rocket, like doing a puzzle and then looking around with a really like, do you love me face? 
Uh, this movie's gonna make us cry. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm excited because that that single picture, even though we're upset with the lack of content, that single picture was worth all five of these. Yeah. So, um, do we know what age range Groot's gonna be in three? Um, I don't know, but I know that in Thor: Love and Thunder, he's still teenage Groot. So I would assume not very much older because all the phase four and five stuff is basically front loaded into 2023, 2024 in, in continuity. Um, except that I think some of it's not, but that's a conversation for another video, which will be out soon, by the way. <laughs> um, it's coming soon, a theater near you. <laughs> uh, that all said, folks, that's our review of the I Am Groove shorts on Disney Plus now. They're worth it. Go watch them. They're a ton of fun if you just want a 20-minute laugh, about a 15-minute laugh. Um, and if you love Groot. Uh, it, it just one last thing to tag on to the expressions. You were talking about not being able to interpret. I think a lot of the way Vin Diesel brings the character, a lot of the way the animators bring the character, is the fact that he can emote in such a way in certain instances where we know exactly what he means. Yes. And the, the, the case in point for me is that moment where he airlocks the symbiote. And he turns around and he says, I am Groot. And we're just like, yes, you are, little buddy. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's interesting to see a character who can only speak three words. And we want a whole series about it. <laughs> so that all said, that's our review of I am Groot from Disney+. Plus. Go watch it. It's a wonderful ride. And it's cute. It's adorable. It's pretty. The animation's on point. Have fun. We will see you next time. Hey, thanks for choosing this video here on the Nerd Network. John, what else can they find here on the network? Well, as always, we have a wide breadth of programs to fit anybody's needs. Uh, every Monday, we dive into select nerdy headlines with our news show, News with the Nerds. Then also make sure to check out our new homebrew live D&D show, Adventures in Nevermore. It, this one airs every Tuesday evening. Also, every month, I take Jake on a journey through a vintage movie or a cult classic from the 70s, 80s, or 90s that I've watched and, and love, and he has missed out on his never seen before. We review these on my show, From the John's Vault. Also, we have Nerds in Conversation. This is our show where we examine current social, political, and civil issues facing the world today, but through the lens of nerd culture. Things like mental health and the value of diversity and inclusion. Finally, we have our flagship show, Nerd Talk. This is where the nerds get together and we discuss and review new movies and TV shows, mainly on the big three nerd franchises like Marvel, Star Trek, and Star Wars. However, we also hit into other properties as well, like the Orville, House of the Dragon, and Rings of Power. We have content to fit any nerd niche, so check them all out. Absolutely. And if you're here and you're still here at the end of this video, please go ahead and click subscribe and ring that notification bell so you get notified of all the content we drop here on the Nerd Network. And do us one more big favor, like it so that YouTube will share this with all the people out there who have nerdy interests and want to come alongside us and share this with your friends. Because the more people we have in the conversation, the better the conversation is. Thank you for choosing our content here on the Nerd Network. And as always, have a great day and be safe.